are at someone's home and here we can see it's Mr. Bean. What he is doing? He is sleeping peacefully with his teddy at his home. But all of a sudden he felt a tremor. He was shocked and ran out of his bed with drowsy eyes. Then he saw everything in his room and all his belongings started shaking vigorously. He had no clue what's going on. The wall clock almost fell to the ground and he ran towards the wall to save it. Then he ran out to the window out of panic. I hope Mr. Bean made all of you laugh. But the incident he was facing is not a matter of joke because that was an earthquake. Now earthquake is a natural phenomenon that is very disastrous. It destroys life and damages properties at large extent. On 25th April 2015, Kathmandu, the capital city of Nepal, experienced a severe earthquake of 7.8 magnitude. The earthquake also hit the neighboring countries like India, Bangladesh and Bhutan. In this CCTV footage, we can see how the normal situation suddenly changed when the ground started shaking. The pedestrians were terrified and the drivers stopped their cars, cycles and motorbikes and laid down on the roads. So a panic flowed through the city due to an earthquake. Apart from Nepal, earthquake occurred in several other parts of the world. This chart shows some of the major earthquakes of the world of different magnitudes and corresponding death rates. One of the highest magnitudes of earthquake ever recorded in history is of 9.5. And the earthquake took place on 22nd May 1960 in Valdivia, Chile. The earthquake took away nearly 6,000 lives. Now in this chart we can also see that an earthquake of 8.0 magnitude took away more than 600,000 and the earthquake occurred on 12th May 2008 in Xinchuan district of China. Next we can see that an earthquake of 9.1 magnitude occurred on 26 December 2004 in Sumatra, Indonesia. This earthquake was also very fatal and took away more than 200,000. Except Nepal, a most recent fatal earthquake took place in Haiti and the earthquake was of 7.0 magnitude which took away more than 300,000 and it occurred on 12th January 2010. Earthquakes also occurred in India of magnitude 7.7 .7 and 7.6 in the states of Gujarat and Kashmir respectively. Now you can pause the video and give a close look at the chart. So in the previous slide we read about different examples of earthquake of different magnitudes. Now what do you mean by an earthquake? An earthquake refers to the sudden and intense shaking of the earth's surface. Now this shaking is caused due to release of energy from the earth's interior. Now, earthquake is a natural phenomena that is very destructive. During an earthquake, cracks develop on the roads, buildings demolishes and people are trampled under the buildings and are killed. And these destructions happen due to intense shaking of the earth's surface. So, earthquake refers to the sudden and violent shaking of the earth's surface. Now before we proceed with our lesson, can you help me to answer this question? What is an earthquake? Is it eruption of molten rocks, intense shaking of the earth's surface, violent rotation of air column or large water waves? Well, we just read that earthquake refers to the intense shaking of the earth's surface. So this is the correct answer. So now let's proceed with our lesson. The scientific study of earthquake and its formation is called seismology. Now the word seismology originates from a Greek word seismos 
where seismos means earthquake. Thus, seismology refers to the study of earthquake and related activities like the waves that are produced during an earthquake. So now we know what is an earthquake. Now let us learn about different parts of an earthquake. If you throw a stone in a pond, what happens? The stone hits the pond at a point and concentric waves develop surrounding that point. These concentric waves shakes the surface water. Similarly, an earthquake has a central and concentric waves. So, just as we have ripples in pond water when we throw a stone, Concentric waves also develop in case of earthquake and these waves are called seismic waves. So what are seismic waves? Seismic waves or earthquake waves are vibrations or waves of energy produced by an earthquake and these waves originate inside the earth's surface and are also found along the earth's surface. Just as we can see these concentric circles or ripples when we throw a stone in a pond, the seismic waves produced by an earthquake are not visible to us. Now, this is the point in the earth's interior where an earthquake originates. Do you know what it is called? So, this point where an earthquake originates is called the center. So, what is a center? A center is the place inside the earth's crust where an earthquake originates. Another name for center is focus or hypocenter. Now since this point lies inside the earth, it is difficult to locate this point. Now we just read that center is the point inside the earth where an earthquake originates. Now when an earthquake begins here, it produces waves of energy that travels in all directions from this point. And the waves of energy hit the earth's surface at a particular point. And that particular point is called the epicenter. So what is epicenter? Epicenter is the point on the earth's surface which is vertically above the focus. And this is the point on the earth's surface where an earthquake begins. So epicenter is the point on the earth's surface where the intensity or the destruction caused by an earthquake is the highest. So, in this picture, we can see different parts of an earthquake. Now, let us compare the different parts of an earthquake with the activity of throwing stone in a pond. So, this picture displays different parts of an earthquake. The place where the earthquake begins is called the center. Now, if you throw stone in a pond water, the place where the stone hits the surface water can be compared to the epicenter of an earthquake. So epicenter is the middle point from where the seismic waves develop. Just as this point from where the concentric circles develop. And this concentric circles that are produced are similar to the seismic waves produced by an earthquake. So now let us make a comparison between epicenter and center of an earthquake. As we just discussed, center is the point inside the earth where an earthquake begins. And this point lies at a depth of 5 to 700 kilometer from the earth's surface. So this depth is almost 5 to 700 kilometer. Whereas epicenter is a point that lies at the earth's surface just above the focus. So in the picture this is the epicenter and it lies at the earth's surface. Now since center is the point where an earthquake begins, the seismic waves that are produced by an earthquake originates here at the center and travels in all direction towards the surface. That is the seismic waves begins from here and travels in all directions.
whereas in case of epicenter the seismic waves spreads out from this point that is from epicenter along the earth's surface in this picture we can see that the seismic waves spreads from this point that is from epicenter along the earth's surface the last point of difference between center and epicenter is that destruction at this point that is at the center is less as center lies inside the earth since center is found inside the earth where no human population exists therefore the destruction at this point is less Whereas epicenter is a point that lies on the earth's surface and therefore the destruction at this point is quite high as the human beings and all the material things are found on the earth's surface and therefore the destruction at epicenter is also very high. So these are the differences between center and epicenter. The main point of distinction between center and epicenter is that center is the point inside the earth where an earthquake begins or originates whereas epicenter is a point just above the center at the earth's surface. Now here we have other important parts of an earthquake. See, anticenter is the point which is diametrically just opposite to the epicenter. Now epicenter is the point where an earthquake hits the earth's surface and anticenter is the point just opposite to it. The next one is shadow zone. Shadow zone is a place inside the earth where the vibrations are hardly felt or not felt at all. In this picture, this part represents the shadow zone because we can see that here no waves or seismic waves travel to this point and therefore we have no vibrations at this point. Whereas see that here vibrations are felt but here no vibrations are felt and therefore this part is the shadow zone. So in today's video we learnt about the meaning of an earthquake. Earthquake is the sudden and intense shaking of the earth's surface. We also read about some of the major earthquakes of the world and then we studied about different parts of an earthquake like center, epicenter, seismic waves, shadow zone and finally anticenter. In our next video, we will study about seismic waves in details. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too. So register for free now.